Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today, we bring to you episode 481, Relaxation for the Mind and Body. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we're diving deep into relaxation techniques that could work wonders for your mind and your body. We're all about keeping things easygoing and being highly effective. We'll be talking about 10 relaxation methods that we not only teach our clients, but we swear by ourselves. These methods encompass ideas to engage all of your senses, and they might not all be for you, but that's okay. We have something small and simple to start with and it's gonna make a big impact. The magic really happens when you're more relaxed. Not only will your mind and body thank you, but you could also expect to have better relationships, heightened productivity, improved athletic performance, and a greater sense of love, and overall, boost your quality of life. You don't have to try all 10 at once. In fact, we encourage you to pick just one or two that resonate with you, something that genuinely speaks to your soul. You see, building a routine and allowing these practices to become a part of your daily life takes time. It's a gradual process, and the impact of these techniques tends to accumulate over time. Don't be too quick to disregard any of them. Give yourself the space and the grace to explore what works best for you, and remember, you can always come back, listen again, and add another layer of relaxation to your journey. Your well-being is worth the time and effort, and we're here to guide you every step of the way. So let's embrace this path to a more relaxed and fulfilled life. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, now it's more important than ever to stay close and connected to us as we're going to be making some changes here at Plant Trainers. So please head over to planttrainers.com and get our plant-based comfort foods recipe book for free. That's a $14.99 value just by signing up for our newsletter so that you can know what changes are because we want to make sure that we stay in touch. And now for a moment of gratitude. I think this segment is really important. Just take a moment and really think about what you're grateful for with us today because there is so much going on in the world and we need to recognize what we are grateful for. I'm so grateful for our children and all the progress that they've been making and the great academic year that they're having. And we're also both grateful for our family being safe and we hope that your family is safe as well. All right, so it's time to relax. It's time to relax. What we're going to do is we're going to go through 10 different types of relaxation techniques and give you a couple of different options in there. And like we mentioned in the introduction, they might not all be for you. Don't dismiss them too quickly. Find one or two things that you could be consistent with, and then we can build on top of it. Do you think if I talk slowly and with this kind of a voice, it's more relaxing for people to listen to? Or maybe they're going to speed up the the rate (laughs) at which they listen to the podcast. All right, let's get into the first one. All right, so the first one is really very basic because we need to breathe. We need to breathe to live. So let's start with breathing techniques because often we are breathing to stay alive, but we are not breathing to really help our nervous system. So you can definitely do deep breathing. You can set an alarm or you can take different times throughout the day to really make sure that you're bringing that breath deep into the body. It will really help relax you and work well, with your nervous well, what system. What defines the deepness of the breath? Like how deep do you have to hold it in? Is there a certain time or? So for, for people who are really doing deep breath practicing and trying to make, you know, trying to really make strides, do meditation with it. Sure, they might have things that they're following. But if it's not something that you're doing already, don't worry about, you know, how long you're holding it for. You want to try to bring it down into your belly as opposed to keep it in your lungs. So if you could kind of put your hands on your belly and think about that. But don't go too deep that it hurts you, right? Like if you have breathing issues. But you just want to make sure that it's not just that superficial breathing that we're just doing and staying in fight or flight all the time. So it's more focused on actually breathing yes. into your belly. thinking about your breath and taking it into your belly. Okay, counting your breath? Counting your breath. So if you wanted to take that further, you could count breaths. So maybe say, all right, I'm going to start by doing three deep breaths. And then, you know, the next time you do it, you could do four deep breaths. And you could work on it and you could make it go. You can improve it each time, make it longer. 
And then there's guided breathing exercises, which you can look up on the internet. You could find one that speaks to you. you so there's actual like guided, not meditations, but breathing exercises. Yes. So people are leading these videos or podcast episodes or whatever they might be teaching people how to breathe and you're following what they're saying. Absolutely. You might need to use your fingers to close different nostrils. You might be holding your breath for a different amount of time or taking a certain amount of deep breaths in a row. There's many different things out there. Just make sure that you don't necessarily just turn on the first one. Make sure that you feel some kind of connection with the person who's leading it and try it out. But if you get dizzy at any point, take a step back and maybe don't breathe so deeply and you might need to work your way up to it. All right. What's the second one? Mindfulness and meditation, right? Okay. All right. So meditation can mean many different things. And we've talked about that. On other of, episodes of the, show, of the Plant Trainers podcast. The, the Plant Trainers podcast. Yeah, that's us. Um, so we've talked about it before. So you might be doing a guided meditation, right? Same like the guided breathing. You might just be closing your eyes and saying a mantra over and over again. Uh, it's not always about what you see or what you feel or what you don't see and what you don't hear. Just taking that time to be still and whatever, again, whatever level you're at, there's somewhere to start. And so what's the difference between meditation and mindfulness? So for me, mindfulness is seeing how do you feel in that moment, right? So if I start to panic that I need to drive somewhere new, Stop. Pay attention to that panic. Where is it happening in my body? Why am I actually feeling the panic? What of these relaxation techniques can I do to bring it down? If I'm going to talk to somebody when I'm nervous, taking a moment to take a breath and think about the words that are about to come out of my mouth instead of reacting to them in a harsh way when they didn't do anything in the first place, I'm just nervous about something. So it's really about bringing awareness. Yeah, bringing awareness to yourself and then being able to move in the right direction. And then there's visualization, which is something that we use in athletics quite often and preparing yourself to compete in an event or an activity or even if it's doing a presentation, just seeing yourself, taking taking a moment to, to see yourself going through the motions and doing whatever you're about to do. Yeah, and seeing it be successful is right. is the key there. Yeah, so absolutely. So those are kind of the three areas that you can look at for mindfulness, and we hope okay. that you find something good there. And number three, physical relaxation. So this is different than number two because number two focused more on the mental aspect, but number three, we're talking physical. So how does that work? Right, so you can do muscle relaxation techniques. So for example, if you're lying down or even sitting at your desk, you might start with your toes and crinkle up your toes and hold them really tight for a couple of seconds and then let go and then do the same with all of your feet and then the same with your calf and the same with your thigh and work your way up the body all the way up to your the creases on your, on your forehead and, and work up that way. So there's different progressive muscle relaxation that, that you can do. When I think physical, I think of yoga and stretching. Is that the same? That's where this fits in? Yeah, this would fit in there as well. So there's yoga, there's stretching, you know, you can get a massage, right? Like there's different things that you can do there. And, you know, sometimes people, for, for those of our clients who are using our Renew 28, our, our Redox gel, they might even use that to work on certain parts of the body that are hurting them in that moment as well. Okay, number four, sensory relaxation. All right, so here we're looking at using other senses besides what we normally use on a regular basis. So aromatherapy, right? What is it that we smell? There is research that essential oils can trigger certain parts of our neurological systems to create, you know, less stress or better mood, things like that. Whether you're behind that science or not, I mean, try it out because you never know if it will help you. The other thing is just if you smell the same smell every time you do other relaxation techniques, you're pairing that together. So even though you might not have time to go through your whole muscle routine or stretching routine, but you're smelling the same smell, your brain is going to remember it like Pavlov's dogs, but in, in, in a good way, your brain is going to remember it. So you can definitely use aromatherapy. The, the thing that I will warn you is make sure that you're using a good quality, make sure that it's a reputable brand, uh, because there could be toxicity in some of the other essential oils or incenses and things like that out there. And sensory, there's also listening to music, going out into nature and going for a walk. There's like other parts of 
you know, we have many yeah. senses, right? Yeah. So music that's going to relax you. Nature has so many senses, right? There's especially in fall, there's the scent of nature. Uh, there's the sounds of the animals, the leaves crunching. So there's different things there. And in terms of sensory, there's all, we also have our acupuncture points, right? Our acupressure points. So again, going back to that redox gel, using it on various parts of your hands or your feet or your neck to work on various parts of your body. And we'll throw a link in there if you need it in the show notes. Okay, number five is probably the one that I think is like super important that most people don't take the time to do because they're too busy. And that's taking care of themselves. So some self care. And we're talking about things like a warm bath, warm shower, maybe using a sauna, uh, doing things like that, that people just don't spend the time to do. And that's not only great for relaxation, but it's great to promote recovery for your physical activity. Yeah, and actually that's something that I am going to give props to Adam for. It's weird to call you Adam. Um, to, to Props to Adam for. He does take the hot bath. He does put the, the salts in there. He will go in the infrared sauna. He'll take that time for himself, which is great. Um, we could stick aromatherapy in there. You can match it, aromatherapy in the bath. But also things like journaling can be really calming and helpful too. And if something is really bothering you, um, some people will journal and then they will kind of melt the paper in water after so it dissolves or carefully burn it. Don't want to take any responsibility for fires here, but carefully burn it to kind of let go of that negative energy as well. We're just going to take a little break here because I want to share with you that growth is something that happens for everyone and every business. And we've been going through a lot of personal and professional growth here at Plant Trainers, and we want to stay connected with you. That's why we're giving away our plant-based comfort food ebook that's worth $14.99 for free at our website at planttrainers.com or by clicking the link in the show notes. Click on that, get on our newsletter because we're going to be making some serious changes and you need to be aware of what's going on. We look forward to connecting with you there. And now back to the show. Okay, and number six, let's go to the next one, which is creative expression. Yeah, that overlaps with the journaling as Mm. well, right? Journaling can be in there too, but a lot of people paint or knit or um, pottery, different kinds of creative outlets that people might have. Just drawing something. It doesn't have to be painting necessarily. Reading. Yeah. And you kind of want to... If you're you're doing reading, you might want to choose the book that's going to actually help you relax, not something about that that's going to get your adrenaline higher. Not a Stephen King novel? Maybe not. (laughs) Maybe not. You're funny. But that would would lead into number seven, right, which is humor and entertainment. And maybe that's where, you know, you're trying to be funny and maybe you're reading a book that's funny. Are you telling me I'm trying to be funny? You're always trying to be funny. I'm I'm funny. Um, Yeah, so laughter, laughter is great. So having friends or a partner or family who can make you laugh, a 30 minute Netflix sitcom uh, while you're while you're walking or while you're cooking can be helpful too, but don't fall down that Netflix rabbit hole because that's going to have the opposite effect. Funny shows, funny movies, funny podcasts, there's lots of ways to get humor into your life. And number eight, nutrition and beverages. Yes. So, of course, we I don't think we can go one episode without talking about nutrition. But when you feed your body, your body's going to respond to what you're feeding it. So feeding it better, your body will respond better when you good or bad. Exactly. Good or bad. When you people need to recognize and become more aware of what they put in their body and how their body reacts to it. Yeah. When you eat crap, you normally feel like crap. Although when you feel like crap, you often want to eat crap. So it's a cyclical circle, and that's when it brings you back to mindfulness. Pay attention to how you're feeling, know what's going to help you, and really make sure that you're getting in you know, good fiber. You don't want to get backed up. Make sure you're getting good greens, good antioxidants, and so on. Lots of water. Yes. Good teas. Yes, waters and teas. So Hydration is important. You're drinking a tea right now, a warm tea, so that's awesome, but definitely making sure that you're getting enough water throughout the day. We're always getting the question, you know, how much water do I need? It depends on you, where you live, your your weight, your activity level, whether you're sitting right in front of an air conditioner or a heater. So either way, most people are not drinking enough water. Yes. So work on upping, work on upping your water or check in and make sure that you're that you're getting enough. Check the toilet check your pee, make sure that it's not uh, nice and yellow because unless you've just taken some supplements, because if it isn't 
if it is nice and yellow, you're probably not drinking. And what enough. about supplementation? Yeah, so supplementation is important too. You want to make sure that you're getting all of your nutrients. Again, for good nutrition, we know our soil is depleted. We're not always getting what we're told we're getting. We use a really nice um, supplement. We add water to it. It's got GABA in it, ashwagandha, some saffron, and it's a tropical flavor. I know you love that for relaxation. I've been using it a lot lately too. It's got a nice flavor. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. All right. Number nine, mind body practices. So is this a combination of two of the earlier ones where we talked about mindfulness and then physical relaxation? Yeah. And something like yoga is a good example of physical Um, you know, physical practices. But when we talk about mind-body practices, when we take a good yoga class and we're not just going through the motions of the yoga, we're actually learning a lot about life and philosophy and things like that as we go. So, you know, it's not just about doing physically, although doing physically, go for a run, do all those things. um, But sometimes it's that philosophy and teaching that helps you think and reflect and become more mindful. Tai Chi is a good example as well, the the mind-body connection that's really happening there. And number 10, emotional well-being. Well, we always start the podcast off with gratitude. And I think that that's really, really important. Start with the small things, start with the obvious things, but then work, work your way out and say, what happened today in my day that I can be grateful for? You know, I'm grateful it was raining because the world needed that. And I'm also grateful that we have a sliding back door that I was able to, you know, send the dog out to go take a quick little pee and I didn't have to go out into the rain today. Some things that are outside of what you would normally think of, they don't have to be these grandiose things. And the more gratitude you find, the more gratitude will will come your way. The better things will come your way. And I think just being kind in general is a good thing to do towards other people you know even if it's a random act or not a random act and just you being kinder to people it not only cleans up society as a whole and make things better it'll actually help you with your mental awareness your emotional well-being which is number 10 yeah so think about how you're talking to people think about how you're coming across on social media think about giving charity if you haven't given in a while or what neighbor you might be able to help by bringing some groceries to their house or doing a favor for them. And the last thing in there is really respecting your own boundaries and turning off your phone on time, respecting yourself, right? Turning off your phone on time at night so that you can get a better night's sleep. If you've said to work, sorry, I I can't work, don't pick up your phone and then answer a whole bunch of emails where it's going to take away from your time that you have to relax, that you have to be with people who you love. Really respect yourself. So there's a lot of things here today, um, so many things that you could start with that don't require any material whatsoever, just sitting in your seat and and taking a deep breath. Um, again, we will have some links in the show notes, so be sure to check that out. And if that relaxation drink or the renewed gel is something that is on your mind reach out and let us know and if you do purchase it i'm going to gift everybody who does purchase either of them a free 30 minute consult because i want you to feel relaxed and we didn't even talk about the importance of sleep and quality of sleep and quantity of sleep but that's such a huge piece to relaxation and recovery for the following day so think about that We've had lots of podcasts on that. So check out the show notes at planttrainers.com slash 481, and you'll get all the information from today's show. Have a relaxing rest of your day. Hoping you're all well. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with $1 really makes a difference. 
difference in the quality of the show. And don't forget to connect with us on Instagram and Twitter. Our handle is at Plant Trainers. Like Plant Trainers on Facebook, join our newsletter, and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes, a list of our services, and of course, our latest podcast. We encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness. So we hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and and have have a a healthy healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.